Okay, everybody, we're going to explore reactions of monosaccharides. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened. Does that show up over there too? Screen sharing has stopped. Let's try that again. Uh, okay. A little nervous here. We have to draw L galactose here. So it means we have to find galactose that's D on the handout. And every stereo center on the middle carbons here has to be the mirror image of the ones on the handout. So give me the final answer here from, from carbon two here. Is the OH on the left or the right? Carbon two is the next one from the carbonyl. To the left and then right, right, and then left. Then everything's the opposite of what it was on the, your handout in the middle there. Okay, good. And then it says with some enzymes, we're going to make an alpha N benzoyl. Benzoyl. Ben is phenyl plus one more carbon. When it's a benzoyl, it's a carbonyl, and it's going to attach to an N. There you go. That's what N benzoyl means. And three amino pyranose. Okay. All right. Pyranose, six. Um, I'm going to assume you've done about 20 of the previous assignments and you, you've gone through all the steps and, you know, drawing the icon, putting all the ups and downs on, down, right, up, left, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going straight to answers now. So you only get there with a lot of practice. So there's your pyranose. And uh, up left for carbon two, down right for three and four. There was a sigma rotation involved that put the CH2OH down here before you close the ring. And there you have it. I'll put the black H on so you can follow your work when you're doing all the steps at home. And I know I didn't take care of the N-benzoyl or the three amino, but I just drew the uh, pyranose of L-galactose is what I did. Then I carbon three, then I go to carbon three and fix it. One is the anomeric carbon for an aldose. And three was never an OH in this example. Three was an N. It says N benzoyl three amino. Three amino means there's, there was a nitrogen. And then the benzoyl means, hey, it wasn't an amine. It was a carbonyl with a phenyl. All right. That's the answer right there. And then we're reviewing reactions. Oh, we're not done. Oh, I didn't do the alpha where the OH off the OS. OS is a hemiacetal. You still have to draw the OH on the anomeric position and it needs to be trans to the CH2OH. Using my highlighter again, CH2OH is down. Anomeric O has to be up to be trans. There's your alpha right there. And something I got to tell you, it's in the notes everywhere. Hemiacetal is always in equilibrium with ald slash heat. What's that mean? If it came from an aldehyde, it's in equilibrium with the aldehyde. If it came from a ketone, it's in equilibrium with the ketone. What's that mean? Because it's in equilibrium with an aldehyde or a ketone, any reaction of an aldehyde or a ketone is available. Yes, lithium aluminum hydride reduces both aldehydes and ketones to alcohol. This will open up to its aldehyde and be reduced to an alcohol. The amide, chapter 18, 
is a derivative of a carboxylic acid that gets reduced to an amine mm -hmm. under the same condition. So that's why we have two points here. There's two things going on. So what you're going to get, OH on the top, CH2OH on the bottom, carbon two, no change. It already was an alcohol. Carbon three, NHCH2 phenyl. Carbon four, uh, OH. Carbon five, OH. See the two changes from the top and the amide. So trying to help you out here, you can kind of do it from here. It says hemiacetals are always in equilibrium with the aldehyde and ketone. So you look at this molecule, you think about reactions here and here. Now over here in carbon three, one, two, one, two, three. Uh, that was an O. So don't think about reactions there because this is an N now. And now enzymes are going to make uh, beta 2 O. O. That's a capital O. Clearly, it's as tall as the 2, right? If it was a little O, I'd think ortho. If it's a big O, it's something you haven't heard of, but you have heard of it. I'm just going to ask you one question. What did the N mean here? The benzoyl listed right after the nitrogen, or sorry, the N. I gave away the answer because you gave me the answer. Thank you. Uh, the benzoyl is attached to N. Hey, take a wild guess what the phenyl's attached to. Oxygen on carbon number two. Uh, so O is like N. You can use capital O italicized and use it like an N. It's not a real new thing, it's a little new thing. Uh, furanose, okay, oh baby. Uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get some furanose action going in black here. Uh, carbon number four OH to make a furanose. Do you know how I know that? One, two, three, four, five. This is the O, okay? That means this is going to be a group sticking off. And if the O started on the right, down right, down had to go into the loop. That, where am I? I'm looking up for my face here. Down had to go into the loop. Okay. I don't know if on the screen that looked like the right direction, but that was, that's the normal rotation. And that, that, that's the one that puts the C group sticking up. So it's going to be sticking up. We're going to go in black. The C group has a stereo center on it. And this is the part that's going to, you're going to start tripping on me here, saying, why did he put, why did he put the OH on the right this time on carbon five when it was on the left before? And the answer is, I really don't care that it's on the right or left. I care that it's R or S. Because that stereo center doesn't change. None of the stereo centers changes during rotation, please. So a stereo center that used to be S better still be S is what I'm saying. This stereo center was S and it's currently still S. That's good news. Everything else is as it was pictured before. Up left, down right. We didn't put a yeah, I know. I missed my O ben O fennel. Carbon two, the O still up. But what's on the O in the name? In the name, what's on the O fennel? Okay, and I need this to be beta. It's going to be up. Okay, wow. Previous example, alpha was up. This example, beta is up. How can that be? That has everything to do with cis and trans, right? 
If it's cis, it's beta, and there's the C. It, the whole thing is the group. Right there, the C group is up, and so is the O. That's cis, so beta. And I think we got everything covered. Yeah, three points. Those are those are not laughable. If you get a stereo center wrong, like you put this O down instead of up, it's a half point off. If you put this one up instead of down, it's a half point off. You have this group down instead of up, it's a half point off. You get my point? <laughs> stereo centers are not to be ignored. You're darn right. Oh, I had to sneak that in. So some enzymes are gonna make this into an alderic acid. How dare I do the alderic acid? What is an alderic acid? Okay, I had some trouble with Zoom the other day making a video. Uh, I don't want that to happen today. So hopefully we're looking at this in the video. And I wanna to go to our lecture notes, which are at here and here. And that's not what I want. Sorry. I don't even think you're gonna see this on the screen until I do this. Zoom. Where am I, Zoom? All right. Stop share. Share. I need to be looking at, uh, I think it's this one. I think it's showing now. We need to find out what an alderic acid is. We're going to our chapter 25 note. And I see something about al alderic, aldonic, and uronic acids. It's its own handout. Good. Please learn these. They're all derivatives of the monosaccharides where there's oxidation happening. Here's a normal monosaccharide. I chose the example aldose from your handout. Aldose, if you convert the top carbon to a carboxylic acid is now an aldonic acid. Okay, it has nothing to do with the name starting. I should have picked a different example. Wait, that's not aldose, that's mannose. I'm sorry, it's an aldose. Mannose is an aldose. I say, the name of that molecule is not aldose. That's not even a name. Sorry, blow it down. I copied D mannose for an example for the whole page. D mannose is an aldose. It's got an aldehyde on the top. That's why it's an aldose. If you convert the aldehyde on top to a carboxylic acid on top, it's now an aldonic acid. And it's named as such. Look how the name changed. Manonic acid. If I change both the top carbons to carboxylic acid and the bottom carbon to a carboxylic acid, it's not an aldonic acid anymore. It's an alderic acid. Look at the name. Maneric acid. Eric send with Eric. Onyx end with onyx. Oses end with os. There you go. And what about just the bottom? Just the bottom is a uronic acid. Okay. Uronic. So we have to know three new uh, versions of oxidized carboxylic, uh, sorry, carbohydrates that have carboxylics in them. And conjugate bases, of course, the conjugate base of an ic acid is always an H. Ic gives eight, ic gives eight. Uh, careful how you say that. You might get the wrong idea, but uh, I'll leave it at that. And I got to stop my share and redo my share. To go here. And hopefully that overcomes our video problem from yesterday in 244. Ignore me if you're not a 244 student. Okay, uh, enzymes are making an alderic. Which one was alderic? Oh my gosh, I forgot. Uh, you're not gonna see what I'm doing here. I'm just zooming over here. The alderics were the middle one where both number one and six or top and bottom is more important. Both top and bottom are carboxylic acid. Going over here. So you, you just go from the original, please. The original. Straight to this box. Uh, remember though, you're going through here. It is still from this molecule. I'm sorry. 
Uh, no, it's going to be a fissure. So no ups or downs for the chain. We're going to have uh, carboxylic acid on top, carboxylic acid on bottom, because that's an aldehydic acid. Carbon two is an O phenyl uh, on the left. Uh, carbon three stayed the same. Carbon four stayed the same. Carbon five stayed the same. And then I'm going to make two lactones from this thing. Uh, I'm going to make a delta lactone and a gamma lactone. Reminder of the Greek letters are over here. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. So there might be two ways to do it for one of these. I'm pretty sure there's only one way to do it for the other. Uh, delta lactone means you need an OH on the delta position. So if I start on the bottom here, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, that's not an OH. You can't make a lactone with this O and this carboxylic acid. Can't. You need an alcohol. Start from the top. So this example will be in purple. Alpha, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And we're going to make a delta lactone. So carbonyl, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and O. And it says we don't care about stereocenters. That's great news. And remember, this is alpha, beta, gamma. Delta. Now off delta, there's also a CO2H. I uh, got OHs off all of the other ones. And it says we're not going to grade the lactones on stereochemistry. There you go. I didn't worry about ups and downs. Otherwise, you got to worry. And the gamma lactone, I guess I can use the same uh, labeling because I can make a gamma from the same picture. But a, another gamma is possible if you start on the, uh, the top, or sorry, the bottom, alpha, beta, gamma. Ga you can use this O to make an ester here. That's one. Uh, but I can also use this O to make an ester up there, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going purple again. O, alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, well, let's go better than that. Alpha, beta, gamma. And that's an O. And there's something there, something there, something there. And let's put my letters on so I know what's there. Oh, you know, I forgot the O fennel on the previous one, didn't I? Oh, oh. Uh, that was carbon two, O phenyl, my mistake. Same story here, O phenyl, uh, beta is an OH. Gamma is not an OH, you know why? I had to use the OH to make the ester. So this time I used the OH to make the ester and what's sticking off of gamma is still sticking off of gamma. It's uh, a carbon that has an OH and a carboxylic acid. And it's called delta if you're keeping score. Delta's out there. And that's the end of that. And now we're going to take a different approach from our friend L galactose and we're going to make uh, alpha 5 comma 6 dideoxyfuranoside. Oh, God. What's that mean? Dideoxy. Oh, take away the O's from carbons 5 and 6. 5 and 6. CH2 here after you're finished. And CH3 down here. Hey, this is an alpha furano side, and that was a beta furanose. Oh, it's going to look a lot like this. 
Yeah. The only difference between alpha and beta, this group that was uh, upwards here, it's got to be downwards here. And remember, when you rotate it down and you don't take care of the stereo center, you probably make it R by mistake. It needs to go back to looking like this when it was sticking down here. Anyway, that's a lot of talk. Let's just do it. Uh, purple was nice while it lasted. And we got, uh, there's no O phenyl here. Carbon two, there's nothing fancy, OH. Carbon three, nothing fancy, OH. Carbon four, we use the O. And we're gonna have this OH on the left. And I'll highlight that. And it's, it's down. So alpha has to be up again. Yeah. Hey, did I do that right? I don't think I did it right, dude. That, I had the wrong molecule. All that talking I was doing, I forgot. To make the ring, it's all uh, it's always gotta look like this. Gotta look like this. Because that stereo center rotated to make that go there. And if you're curious, there was H's involved here and here. What does change is the, the, the O is not gonna be up here this time, it's gonna be down. Trans. And it's an O side. If it's an O side, it has to have a carbon attached. What carbon? What alcohol was used to make the O side? What alcohol was used to make the O side? Well, uh, I think she's answering the question, where is the O side? Well, it has to be here because that's the only carbon that has two bonds to O. But how do you know what to put on that O? Well, it's listed first. Meta nitro benzyl alcohol is gonna make an acetal with whatever this is, and it's gonna be meta nitro benzyl O instead of OH. Benzyl to show all pi bonds. Dr. Whitaker wants you to show him you know how to draw a nitro group. That's what he's doing. It has to be meta. It has to be meta. And it is. Okay. Once again, the furanose of this sugar will always look the same. These have to look the same. I, I don't know why I was moving this down all of a sudden. The sigma rotations put it up. The alpha and beta is what makes this group up or, up or down. Once again, alpha trans to the carbon sticking off the ring. Beta cis to the carbon sticking off the ring. Now we're talking about NAD plus hint does the same job as pyridinium chlorochromate, that's PCC. The biochemical equivalent of PCC, okay? So we're gonna take any alcohol, primary will become aldehyde, secondary will become ketone. That's what PCC does. Ethers, no reaction. Uh, acetals, no reaction, just Primary and secondary alcohol, that's it. And this statement up here, I'm gonna rewrite it, but this is not a hemi, is it? That's an acetal, correct? So same statement, but profoundly different result. This is an untruth I just wrote here. Till I fix it.
they are not in equilibrium with the aldehyde or ketone. They're not. Acetals, as a result, are called non-reducing sugars. That's how they chose to call it. They should just call it a non-reacting sugar at the, at the acetal position, because that equilibrium doesn't exist. It's like locked in as an acetal. That's what acetals do, they lock it in. If you're a hemi, you're always in equilibrium with your open form aldehyde or ketone. So you can kind of see the answers in no reaction is there. Uh, you can't reduce this, you can't oxidize it uh, at this position, by the way. So lithium aluminum hydride HCl has nothing to react with. Oh, this is not true. I didn't notice that, nobody caught me. There's a nitro group on there. You see the nitro group on there? You see it? It's the first semester, it's not a no reaction. Oh. There's no reaction on the sugar as the statement would hint. The statement down here hints the acetal is not reacting. Okay? Everything else called R won't react. But R is attached to NO2, which becomes R attached to N. What? NO2 becomes with lip, lithium aluminum hydride and HCl, NO2 becomes NH2. not a no reaction. There's an error on the answer key. Guilty is charged. Okay, the PCC, NAD+, plus, whatever thing, everything that's not the acetal is fair for reaction. So we're gonna, we're gonna oxidize our alcohol to an aldehyde and our secondary alcohol to a ketone. Ketone down there, ketone down there, and close the ring and don't change anything else. So we got a question, one second. Metaposition NO2. Yeah. All right, and I put it in the wrong box. Yes, thank you. That was supposed to go in the NAD plus box. Can I get away with grabbing my molecule? Let's see, wish me luck. I got a piece of it. I got another piece. How many pieces does this molecule have? A lot of pieces. I don't even know where that was. It was there? Oh my goodness. Isn't that it? And this goes up here. Jenga. There we go. And now, of course, it's on top of my uh, other answer, but I think we're okay. <sighs> Big sigh. Uh, acetone, please remember acetone is propanones. Hot DST, hint, acetal. Carbon two, carbon three have alcohols. You need two alcohols to make an acetal. You need an aldehyde or a ketone. Yes, aldehyde or ketone, acetone is a ketone. Mm -hmm. And copy everything except for the H's on the O's. I'm going to copy the O without the H. Copy the O without the H. These guys stay the same. I could have used some judicious circling and R groups and saved a lot of time, right? And guys, acetone, acetals, watch. They're, they're some of my, they're my favorite. X marks the spot. Want to see it? Acetone, acetal, X marks the spot. What did I draw on the page in black? It was an X. <laughs> Where are the three carbons? One, two, three. They're the first class I ever had, ever gave the X marks the spot hint to, because I just thought of it now. <laughs> okay. That's an acetone, acetal. It even has a catchy name, huh? Acetone, 
That's the talent. That was a mega activity. And we'll stop our video.